I thank the gentleman. Oh, I recognize Mr. Lucas for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, Doctor. As you're well aware, of course, I live uh, in uh, the great uh, Kansas City District in western Oklahoma. And about the time you were out doing all that hard work in the early 1980s, I was a senior at Oklahoma State. And I'll always think of my father's lecture in the spring of 82 when I would occasionally go to land sales with my grandfather, keep your hands in your pockets and your mouth shut. <laughs> well, it was wonderful advice in 1982. Yeah. The reason I bring that up is we are now dealing with a set of circumstances here that you've discussed and touched around on the edges that in some ways is reminiscent of those early 1980s. You remember, and sometimes there's an occasional view here that nothing is interconnected, that we're all little islands in the world. You remember when Penn Square Bank went down, an energy concentrated uh, banking establishment, which then took down, directly or indirectly, uh, what, Continental Illinois and Chicago, took down Sea First in uh, Seattle, took down two major historic long-term players. Partly, uh, partly that, uh, in my opinion, and you can offer yours and I'd be pleased to hear it, as a result of perhaps misguided uh, fiscal policy by Congress and perhaps misguided monetary policy by the Fed in that late 70s and early 80s period. But it had a devastating consequence and it wasn't just Oklahoma that imploded. We sucked people under with us. Yes. So I guess that brings you to my real question and whatever comments you'd care to offer. As my colleagues have alluded to, with the Fed balance sheet at a little under $3 trillion now, yeah. which uh, by even the Texans' definitions, Mr. Chairman, that's a lot of money. It took us 15 years to recover from the ag and energy sector hangover from credit uh, that started in 1982. In my opinion, in my quadrant, it was 1997 before the ship righted itself. Three trillion dollars is a whole hell of a lot more credit than Penn Square was manipulating. When the right policy decisions are made, how long is it going to take this credit hangover to clear? Well, let me first comment. Uh, I, I was on the discount window on Penn Square and was part of the group that recommended against lending against Penn Square, and I think it was the right decision there, although the consequences, as you said, were very harsh. And for the record, a few officers at Penn Square did go to the federal penitentiary. They so did. It was more than just a few bad decisions. Absolutely. Um, now, to your question of the, the, the degree of liquidity, the, number, the, the amount of time it will take to bring the, the liquidity off our balance sheet, the three trillion, I think is reasonably a period of years. Uh, because we have brought this on. I think if you bring it out too sharply, you will shock the economy. Uh, and in our last uh, minutes, the Open Market Committee talked about <clears throat> how they would go about doing it in terms of rates and, and no longer uh, renewing their debt instruments. But even under those, it will take years. How many? Depends on how the economy does. It depends on what the roll-off of these instruments, the speed of the roll-off of these instruments, and whether we choose to sell those. I don't know how long, other than I know it will take years. And there are risks to doing that. I and that's my point about zero interest rates and creating what I call fragile equilibriums around this very liquid policy that when you finally do begin to move uh, has, a, has a negative effect a negative consequence on the economy, both nationally and regionally, and that does uh, get my attention. Fair statement to say, Doctor, that, uh, of course, we will make at some point a decision here. We will at some point, I hope, achieve a consensus. We have legitimate disagreements within the ranks of the House over what the right policy is. Right. That's the nature of the body. Right. But at some point, we will arrive at something if we make the wrong decision, whatever decision we come to, are the consequences as frightening as I suspect they are? Well, any time... Without make, commenting on any particular decision. Right. Any time you make a wrong decision, there are usually negative consequences. And if you make the wrong decision, there will be negative consequences, whatever that is. And the financial markets are sophisticated enough that they will respond moment by moment with whatever policy decisions we make and will, as prudent money managers, use what I would define from an Oklahoma perspective as defensive policies if they need to, and that well, will ripple too. Well, the, the, greater you, the greater uncertainty you create, the more defensive 
the actions will be. That much we can be sure of. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I yield back the time that I, I have left. I thank the gentleman. We will go ahead and start a second.